we had developed a, uh, a browser called Mosaic at, at Illinois, and um, it was uh, becoming fairly widely used on the internet, but it wasn't yet becoming something that a lot of people could use. Mark and I discussed how to get this, this company off the ground, and I told him that if he could hire the the whole team that, that helped him write Mosaic and implement it in the first place, then I thought we had a good start. What Jim and I and what, what all of us started to realize in, in 1994 was that um, you really could open up the internet to be used by everybody. You could really open it up to be used by kids in school and by people in the workplace and by people at home and people around the world uh, to a level that no one had really imagined. There were four of us in an 8x10 cubicle with three computers, a four-drawer lateral file, a fax machine, phones, and four bodies. It was hell, but it was fun. And it was chaotic, and uh, you never knew what to expect from one moment to the next. I made two or three customer calls compellingly asking for about five million bucks a pop, sold a bucket load of browsers on the left, and I remember I got through to Friday and said, Jesus, how can we keep this up? Most software in the days when we were first getting started, people would spend two years developing a piece of software and they'd spend six or eight months out of that with very private beta tests and under the cloak of dark and you know with people providing feedback and the, you know, trying to get everything exactly right and then, uh, then they released the software. Well, we didn't do that. The idea that we were going to be giving away our software for free, being really radical and doing something that no one had really done before. Um, and just really surprising people. I think that sort of set a character for the company. It was frame-breaking. It uh, more than bent, it broke all the rules because for-profit commercial software companies had really never done that on the kind of scale that, that we did. The night that we sort of turned it on live for download, um, one of the engineers had wired it together so that every time there was a download, a cannon shot would go off. I was thinking actually about retiring and um, was starting to get calls from various headhunters. Well, about that time, I read this interesting article in Fortune magazine. I even mentioned it to my wife that night in the den about these 25 uh, hot companies to watch, these little startups. And one of them, the lead company in that article, was this company called Mosaic Communications. Jim stepped into an organization of maybe 100 or so people that was just about to run out of money that didn't see how they'd make their next quarter. Uh, had some really vigorous leadership in place, but an incomplete team. And he said, don't slow down, let's put the pedal to the metal. He said, we're either going to, this rocket ship's either going to blow up on the, on the launch pad, or it's going to take off. And he said, I'm betting we're going to take off. A great idea brought in at breakfast was hatched into a plan by lunch and was fully executed by dinner, period. Everyone was, was, was kind of helping to roll this ball forward with a lot of energy, a lot of passion and a lot of teamwork. It was always chaotic, trying to organize things, get things set up, hire all these people, get them on board, get the benefits right, get the compensation right. It was, um, and get the culture right, that was the most important thing. The original Netscape web team was a lot of fun. Um, it was really, it was something that we were kind of literally making up as we, as we went along. People would, you know, do whatever it took, right? I mean, if there um, was a serious customer situation and people understood that, they would work all night if they had to, you know, working through the weekends. It was a lot of 20, 22 hour days, seven days a week. It had the feeling of a frat house. Um, you could find people there at all hours doing all sorts of things, some of which were work related. Before we went public, um, the company really had very little cash. We had, uh, at, the, at the end of the first quarter and in early April, we were down to bits and bytes in terms of how many dollars were in the, in the bank account. 
I remember Jim was willing to do the IPO as long as we could get it done before his annual fishing trip with his brothers. And in retrospect, I think it, the IPO was as successful as it was because the product was as successful as it was. The browser was so empowering to people that they wanted a piece of the place that made that browser. And the excitement in the company was, was just it was just palpable. It was just it was just amazing. Everybody was trying not to watch the stock, but you couldn't kind of help it because everybody was talking about it everywhere. The pace was was unbelievable. I mean, I thought I had worked at fast growing companies. I'd worked at I worked at Intel when it was growing at 35% a year. I worked at Sun when it was doubling every year. And I got here, we were doubling every three or four months. It was, it was like, how, how, do you, how do you do this? How do you just keep, keep going? For all of 1995, we were second only to Windows 95 in sales at retail. It's unbelievable. The momentum behind Netscape was just not something anybody could control, anticipate. And a lot of times, you know, the sales cycle might be, you know, 30, 60 days and you're closing, you know, a $2 million deal, $5 million deal, $10 million deal. We used to say we were selling browsers by the pound. When you can reach a million people and 10 million people and 50 million people and you can get them to respond in a short time period and they were just, everybody was just so hyped. And get them to respond in a short time period, you develop things so much more rapidly. Very few of the customers did with our product what we told them to do. <laughs> we told them to do certain things with the browser and all these browser engineering request changes would come in and we go, well, why is that? They shouldn't be doing this. And we realized they would be inventing a new channel for the internet, a u new use on an internet, intranet, or evolving something in e-commerce or a desire to get more publishing and content down or whatever. So the fact was, I don't think we realized it how early in the curve we were for birthing new technologies and how much they would have to change. The developers here uh, were the greatest cross-section, smartest people, uh, the most creative individuals, and some of the greatest non-conformists um, to work with. And, and it was always uh, a joy because uh, the, there, nobody was cut from, from uh, the same cloth and I pulled three, or three consecutive all-nighters with a total of two and a half hours of sleep, I think it was, such on my cube, such part of it in my car. One of the things that, that GM emphasized was that we shouldn't restrict the growth of the business and we shouldn't rein the growth in simply because we couldn't imagine that it could continue at a given pace. In other words, let the stallion have its head, let it run, give it the reins, and we'll figure it out. Just hang on. It became pretty clear fairly soon that we were going to change the world. I think we have used the internet in very advanced ways to create the products for the internet. An example of that would have been all that silly thing we did a few years ago that actually turned what was a very negative thing, all the big press write-ups about people who were finding bugs in the program and then they'd rather run to USA Today than bring it into us and let us fix it. All the crackers were out there trying to figure out how to get into, you know, into our security system and they'd find a hole. And the New York Times would call up and they'd say, boy, doesn't this obscure bug in Navigator mean that commerce is impossible? that Netscape as a company is doomed. How are you going to respond to this big security hole? It was, oh no, we've got a crisis on our hands and what are we going to do and this is embarrassing and we have a flaw in our product and, and it, how do we, you know, let's call out the crisis cops to deal with this. And, and Mark was very instrumental in saying, no, on the internet there's another way of dealing with this. And then I think Jim Barksdale invented the whole Bugs Bounty thing. He said, why don't we just pay these boys to go out and do this for us? That way we'll get there ahead of time and, and we'll get them on our side. That was so revolutionary to me. It was, a, it was just like, it, it was such a breath of fresh air.
people are having to take us much more seriously because we've got more than just a, a, a browser out there. We've got all these servers and, and we're starting to get into enterprise customers and, and really make a difference. It was so much fun actually to watch folks from big companies that would be sitting there not having a clue what they were going to do. They knew they, they knew they were going to set up an internet business, but they didn't know what it was going to be. And so they'd, they'd negotiate with us and in, that, in the course of that negotiation, they come up with their business plan. We started to really commercialize the website. We were the first website to have advertising on it, the first website to have a commerce store. The internet growth was the kind of phenomena that there was not even a contemplation of long-term planning. Because long-term planning was three months. Because you didn't have the opportunity to know enough about the growth of the internet to know anything that was more than three months out. If you pause long enough to think about all this stuff, it would have knocked you down. Every time we do something, it would just create just another, another revolution out there. We just were execution engines. The way it always seemed to work is you'd work and two weeks away from the deadline, you're thinking there's no way they're going to be able to release this product. There was such pressure to get product out the door, and I don't know whether that pressure really existed or whether it was internal to me but I just felt like it was a 10-ton weight. One day you'd get it and two-thirds of the bugs are gone and you're thinking, are they, ah, how did they do this? It's impossible. But they did it, and so we shipped. tell the story of Netscape without, without discussing Microsoft because once Microsoft decided that they had it in for us and that we were to be in essence exterminated, our job became that much harder. On the other hand, it became that much more important for all of us to accomplish our mission. When Microsoft announced that they were getting into the internet business, you know, people pronounced us dead. The following year, you know, uh, the analysts once again were saying, oh, there's no way you can compete. Look at all these products that Microsoft is coming out with. There's no way this company is going to survive. All our customers were being taught by Microsoft that browsers were free. And then it was hard for Netscape to go ask for money. I remember at one point, uh, one of our um, e-com or e-staff meetings, when one of the people stood up and said, discussing Microsoft, said, look, if they don't kill us, they're going to really make us stronger. And I, at the time, we all chuckled uh, kind of wryly because there was, there was truth in that. A series of industry luminaries were being asked to present to the Senate their points of view on these matters. And so Bill Gates presented his written testimony, and he delivered it in hard copy, and then he read it. And Scott McNeely delivered his testimony in hard copy and then read it. And Jim Barksdale uh, was, I believe, the third of the speakers. And he delivered his testimony and said, I'm not going to read it because I trust that you all can read. Let me do something else. And I'm sitting at home watching TV and I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's going off script. What's going to happen next? I want to, if you don't mind, ask, can I ask the audience one question and get a little quick poll here? This looks like a an absolute cross-section of the American economy to me. <laughs> but I would like a show of hands. How many people in this audience, all right, use PCs, not Macintoshes? Now, that's only about 3% of the shipments. Now, you, how many of you use Intel-based PCs in this audience? Raise your hands. All right, of that group, no, keep your hands up. <laughs> do what I tell you to do. <laughs> of that group who use PCs, how many of you use a PC without Microsoft's operating system. Gentlemen, that's a monopoly. I knew that, it, that I was telling the truth, and it just really didn't much matter what else they tried to throw up with all their theatrics. That's a very comforting, powerful uh, feeling to have when you're taking a week-long oral exam and every question is designed to trick you. The reality is we did get stronger as a result of that, of that pressure, and I think we all knew here that we were we were doing the right thing and um, and that we had to continue and that when all was said and done, we would prevail.
How many companies do you know or how many people do you know would want to be in a position where they take a product that a year and a quarter ago represented 50% of their revenue, rip that out of the side of their company and replace it within 12 months? That is quite an accomplishment and one that I must say not very many people uh, thought we could do. So congratulations. You think about what was going on at the time. It was a real down point for the company. Um, we had just come off a very negative announcement about our earnings for that quarter, what was to be expected. And there was a lot of bad press happening. There were a lot of rumors happening. Um, I think the ego internally was broken. And I think Netscapers weren't used to that. And instead of falling down to that, what happened was something that I thought was just incredibly powerful. We shocked the world. We made our source code free on the net, Mozilla.org was born, and we've now down downloaded over a quarter of a million copies of our marvelous product. As once again, Netscape turned on a dime, completely floored the industry, floored our competitors, and set us off sailing in a very positive direction. The users of, of software are going to benef benefit tremendously. What that benefit to Netscape would be is, is harder to, to nail down and say this is definitely going to benefit Netscape, which is why it was a real a gutsy move to go ahead and do it. I think people sort of forgot that that's how Netscape started and that's the spirit in which the company was founded. And um, once again, we just blew them away. It was cool. Really fun. And I really believe that that was just a part of the cultural fabric here, that we knew that we could, we could be nimble enough to do what we had to do. But it wasn't really until 97 where we really invested in NetCenter and decided that we were going to enter the portal space. We had seen the, the net effect of people like Yahoo taking advantage of, of the eyeballs of users to uh, create follow-on business opportunities and thought that this was the best opportunity for us um, and, that, and that website property to take it forward in that direction. We launched NetCenter 2.0 with um, 18 different content channels, including kids and family, sports, personal finance, etc. We have over 12 million registered users today, 50 million page views per day, and haven't missed our revenue target in um, since the beginning. Uh, if you think about it, we were a browser company, then we became a, a browser server company, then we became really a, a much more robust groupware messaging kind of company. And then once again, we reinvented ourselves last, last year into being an e-commerce company. Netscape and America Online today effectively completed their marriage made in cyberspace. Netscape shareholders voted overwhelmingly in favor of the $9.6 billion deal. It was the last hurdle to that deal. I don't think there's any question that one of the top one, two, or three companies of the next century, century on, and related to the Internet will be AOL. Uh, that has now, in my opinion at least, been proven. And I think in the opinion of an awful lot of people within this company and outside the company. I'm very very bullish on the prospects for Netscape remaining a, a distinct brand and culture that's part of the AOL web and network of companies. Putting these together means that we now have the leading company in the industry by any measure, by any metric, uh, in terms of our ability to go help consumers get on the net, take advantage of it, and go help businesses get on the net, take advantage of it. Look at what's going on around us in Silicon Valley, and we are at the epicenter of it. The thing that makes Netscape important is that it's relevant and that it was one of the principal technologies that really caused the internet phenomenon to take off. The move from Mosaic to the Navigator and then the other products that we built and services have been the defining products that have created the whole internet boom and we should all take great pride in that. We were creative, we could apply our intelligence, we knew we had the right the right formula, we knew where the, the future was going, we knew we had something to contribute to that, something big to contribute to that, and we worked together. That, in terms of human experiences, it doesn't get much better than that. And I think about what has happened in just four and a half years 
and how many people now just use a web address as a, as a given in every advertisement they do and on every business card. And you have to remember that those things weren't true when we started this company. And I really believe that Netscape created that phenomenon. And I know that I was part of that. And there is nothing that is more exciting to me than that. We all talk about how much we love change. We want to be part of it. But then when it faces us face to face, it is a bit intimidating. But I promise you, these are going to be some of the most exciting times of your life that you'll remember forever. I also want to wish all of you the very best in your future careers and much success to you and yours and, and a great, happy and enjoyable life. And I want to thank you for letting me be part of your great winning team. Thank you. people at Netscape that could have sort of developed a cult following, Barksdale was it. He's the leader of the pack. I mean, he is the one that just put spirit in this place. Netscape! Everywhere! Team! Fight! People were really drawn to him and to his philosophy and they really dialed into that right away. Jim is the kind of chief executive who has a very natural ability to get people to uh, put out their highest and best effort. I was not born yesterday and I didn't fall off the turnip truck and I know it's going to be difficult and I don't have every answer how we're going to increase market share but I learned a long time ago if you make it real clear and a lot of smart people work at it they'll figure it out. <laughs> so y'all figure it out. <laughs> Our strategy is composed of two parts. Get known, get in. If you can't remember it, it's unlikely you can accomplish it. Jim gave us a spirit of, your job is to go out and get it done. We're going to figure out a way to, to pull this one off. And so we, we did some of the most amazing and creative things as a company because Jim had that spirit of, we can do anything. We have plenty of visionary and smart people, but what's really unusual at Netscape is how we work together as a team. And uh, that was made possible in no small part by our leadership. We have three rules at Netscape. The first rule is, if you see a snake, don't call committees, don't call your buddies, don't form a team, don't get a meeting together, just kill the snake. The second rule is, don't go back and play with dead snakes. Too many people waste too much time on decisions that have already been made. And the third rule of snakes is, all opportunities start out looking like snakes. Well, I've always told people to not think of Netscape as a family, that we're a team. Because if you're a family, that creates a need for sort of a daddy. And I've always told them, I'm not their daddy. I'm here for you, but I'm not your daddy. I'm not going to treat you like that. You know, we're all adults here. We're going we're gonna to work together. Not a huge ego. Um, not a selfish man in any way. Uh, very concerned about employees, concerned about relationships between employees. Uh, good guy. I had the marvelous uh, good fortune, or misfortune, whatever it is. I had five brothers. And the amazing thing to me was my mother convinced every one of us that she loved each one of us the most. So I love all of you. The most. I just can't say enough about how much I respect that man. You know, he really um, uh, cares about people, is willing to make hard decisions, is funny. He was always uh, had some way of expressing something that makes you smile and makes you um, look at the world a little differently. One of the big uh, companies we were working on in Europe walked by the, the server room where we run the uh, www.netscape.com and this woman started crying. She said for two years she's been using our product in Milan, Italy. Every day she sees our website and now she sees where it comes from. That shows you the impact we have without realizing it. 
we had a contract with Silicon Graphics, and part of our contract was that we sold them the source to the product in exchange for them being a partner of ours. And I remember there was a big debate inside the company about whether or not we should sell the source. And uh, Jim had a very simple answer to that dispute. He said, honor the contract. Anybody can keep their word when it doesn't cost him anything. Uh, the real question is, if it's going to cost you something to keep your word, do you still keep your word? And, and his answer to that was always, yes, you should. I think his values and what he set for us as a company are very important because organizations take on the character of the leader. Jim would always sort of raise his hand uh, like the man at the end of the table should, and we'd all silence. And Jim just sort of said, folks, does anyone have any data here? He said, if, if everybody has an opinion and no fact to back it up, then mine's the opinion that counts. That just started put in place very early on, saying, you know, this is going to be a company that's going to be managed logically and rationally, and um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to make sense. Some of the proudest moments have been when we have created a new customer and expanded that customer with the use of our products. He's an excellent salesperson. Um, probably Netscape's biggest cheerleader. If we have made a commitment to a customer, he will do whatever it takes to deliver on that. There was a problem in one of the products that we shipped which caused uh, Jim Barksdale to fly over to the client site and to show his commitment and belief in the product, Jim Barksdale wrote a check for uh, $500,000. We put a lot on the line, both professionally and corporately and personally. I do believe in the people of this company and I believe deeply in the products we've created. I think they're important, they're relevant, they're necessary. Netscape, everywhere, team, fight. There is nothing that drives me more in this world. It isn't, it isn't money and it isn't what the, the people say good about us. What drives me more than anything is that I want to prove all these bastards wrong. <laughs> When somebody dissed our people, his organization, his team, he's very uh, protective of the team and, and uh, took all uh, criticisms of them, I, I think, quite personally. I think to go up against Microsoft took a great deal of personal courage. I mean, look, face it, to be the chief executive of any company making any kind of ordinary business decisions is tough. It takes a certain amount of of intestinal fortitude. There were times when it was very, very trying, and I think we showed a great deal of courage and resolve, and today are much admired for it. Because we grow at such a rapid rate that not everybody understands what we're trying to do at any particular point in time. And I can't imagine how we're going to get there if we don't know, like the, the story of the little girl Alice getting to the fork in the road and asked the Cheshire Cat, which way do you go? And he said, where are you going? She said, I don't know. He said, well, then any road will do. I've, uh, I've got lots of time for Jim Barksdale, lots of respect and lots of admiration for him and for the sacrifices he's made to uh, help get us to where we are today. I think of myself as much as working for Netscape as I do working for Jim Barksdale. He taught me uh, uh, the value of patience, uh, which I still have trouble with. He, I believe, has helped all of us who work directly with him to become better people, better managers. He walks into a room and he, you, he's the sort of person you just want to follow. Dude, I'd kill for him. Yeah, yeah, I'd kill for him. The real genius of Jim was recognizing that we would be a great and large and sizable and substantial and high impact company. And he saw that early. Seeing it's one thing, but the, the genius was to build the company around that premise. We'll uh, look back on this time and say this is a very special time and we, each of us was there and uh, we knew Jim Barksdale and he and we made a difference together. He really did help us become one of the greatest companies in history and it's been a phenomenal ride. It's uh, the greatest time of my life. Uh, I'm going to miss everybody. <laughs> <laughs>